الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم it is narrated in some books that there used to live a person with a very beautiful voice and he used to play a musical instrument and he used to sing for the public and because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him this talent of a beautiful voice and being able to play the instrument in his younger age he became very popular and so fame popularity as we know these are tools of shaitan and it makes it very easy for a person to become ghafil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to live your own life you have everybody giving you attention everybody praising you all the time you're getting money from just singing and playing the musical instrument so this is how this person spent <coughs> his life but as it so happens that life does end does it not so this person when he became older obviously now his voice was not as beautiful as before and he did not have the energy the vigor to play the instrument anymore so all the people all the people who were giving him attention all the people who were attached to him slowly and gradually they started to move away from him and such a time came that this person started starving because he had no money he had nobody to take care of him and you know this is where the heart breaks you know when you have nobody to look up to you have nothing left in your life and so you know, he tried and he tried but you know he could not make a living so he eventually decided well if my end is my death so why don't i just go to the cemetery to the graveyard and so he did he went there and he dug a grave and he laid in the grave and you know he said that all my life i used my voice to communicate with the public and now i'm going to use my voice to talk to my mahbub haqiqi to my rabb that i have ignored and i have been ignorant of and he was so throughout my life so he started making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that hal that he was in and some time passed and he looked and he saw that there was this tall man walking toward him and he paid attention and it so happened that it was amir al-mu'minin has umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and now this person is afraid because everybody knew has umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu you know was a very strict person and so this person you know he is afraid he doesn't know what to do he doesn't know what's going to happen to him and and when has umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu comes to him you know he asks you know mirum mumini what brings you here and umar azila ta'ala who said that i have been told in a dream of mine that a person is hungry that i should go and feed him and this person when he heard this that the mirum mumini one of the greatest sahaba radhiyallahu ajma'in and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to feed him you know that really affected him deeply and in some books it says that you know he screamed in this wajah that he passed away from that now this is a very interesting story and our sheikh has a sheikh kibni akhtar sahab rahmatullah ta'ala used to tell this story a lot as well what this really shows are again some of the ahwal that a person goes through we spoke about what is known as tawba which starts with this nidama of the heart <coughs> this remorse this regret of the heart 
this decision that a person wants to change themselves. And so this person, after living a lifetime of, of hawa, of, of basically his own desires, his own whims, towards the end, and he was forced into this situation a little bit because had his voice remained the same and his ability to play the music and instrument, he probably would have just kept on going. But this is how Allah Ta'ala arranges things as well. Opportunities are created in our mind, in our eye. Huh? Why am I not being able to eat? Why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me? But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows best. You know, Lama Iqbal said, "Tu bacha bacha ki na rak isse ki tera aay na hai, wo aay na. Jo shikasta ho to aziz tar hai nigaah hai aay na saath. That don't protect your heart because this mirror is that mirror that when it is broken." into pieces that broken mirror is mahboob is beloved to the to the one who has created this mirror so sometimes we don't know like why things are happening but it may actually end up that this is the door for tawbah and the hal the kafir that we wanted to talk about today is inaba is this again it's a stronger form of returning back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tawbah is also returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in, you know, in our regular language, we associate Tawbah with istighfar, which is asking for forgiveness. Inabit is like the next step in the Tawbah, that once you have made the niyyah, once you have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, now you, you make that you turn, right? Now you tilled and inclined towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what inabat is. And this word is used in the Quran in various, various places. This ruju ilallah. This, this turning back or going or moving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such a person is called an abdul munib, a person who inclines towards Allah, a servant of Allah, a slave of Allah. And the inner self of such a person is muni, that this person has a heart that inclines towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why are we saying this? Because this is also something we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you look back at that story, everything was kind of arranged for him. For that jazz, for that pull towards towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that he actually asked for forgiveness. He realized his true maqam in awqat, which is nothing. And with that tawbah, now he's inclined, even though he doesn't really know what to do, but he, in his own words, is inclined towards Allah. He's making dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such a qadardan. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his awliya and his sahaba kiram for Prophet of Persia. And you know, these are, there are many stories like this. Many stories like this. For example, Hazrat Sufyan Sawri rahmatullah ta'ala said about him that one day he, uh, you know, he was doing Qailula and, you know, he saw in his dream that he's been ordered that, you know, go and pray the janazah of one of my awliya. He wakes up and he asks around, like, did somebody pass away? He's like, yes, one of the neighbors did. And when he heard about the neighbor, he knew that this was an open fasak. This person was an open sinner. And so he, you know, he's naturally... Um, curious and he goes and he asks you know, he asks the wife you know, what happened how did this person die what was his condition he stayed when he was dying and so the wife basically says that you know this person had been an open sinner throughout his life but when he was on his deathbed when he was breathing his last he turned towards the sky and he said, Oh Allah, have mercy on that person who neither has this dunya nor has he akhirah. That, Oh Allah, us shaks pe rahim kha ki jiske paas na dunya hai na dunya. Na akhirah. Have mercy on that person. And what was that? That was the breaking of the heart. That was making of the tawbah because he has nidama. Why, why else would you say that, Oh Allah, have mercy? Because you feel that I have, no, I have nothing to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in those moments, when a person turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawbah, with inaba, ruju ilallah. This is ruju. 
Who is he speaking to? No? There's no nobody in between. That's it. It's you and your Rabb. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only accepted the tawbah, but the wali of the waqt, you know, he's being ordered that go and pray the salah of one of my own here. So this is, you know, alhamdulillah, this is the mercy of Allah. And we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah give us this qalb munib and make us abdul munib that that servants and, and slaves will incline to you. And you know, one of the signs is that um, ibadah and zikr and following of the sharia becomes easier for such a person. Um, the zahiri you know, aspect of the sharia becomes easy for a person to, to do that. That is a sign that such a person is getting pulled. Otherwise, it becomes very hard, very difficult. It becomes a musibah that I have to do this. It's, you know, you're just kind of pushing yourself and um, really, you know, it's the heart is not there. And, and you know, this is, it's, it's burdening yourself with it. And that might be a sign that, you know, it's, it's artificial, not to say to leave it, but maybe increase in the dua that Allah Ta'ala allows the heart to incline makes the heart desire, make the heart want. May Allah Ta'ala fill the heart with those emotions, you know, that want it, you know. Like when a, if somebody is starving, is hungry, nobody has to convince such a person to eat at iftar, do you? Yeah? You have your biryani in front of you and it's ready and nobody has to convince you. You cow, 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 no, it's, that's right there, you just can't help it. Because your whole being is prepared, is ready to consume it. And so this is how we should, this is really one of the goals. As, as we said, we want to make this a goal-oriented Ramadan. That we should ask Allah Ta'ala, then make us like that, that, that our heart inclines towards Him. And it's not artificial, it's organic. And it's not forced, it's something that we want, that the heart desires to do. You know, this is a true murid right? who makes such an irada for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, we, we should ask Allah ta'ala that Allah ta'ala gives us that, that feeling as well. And, you know, such a people, these are the people who are devoted to Allah. Such people have wafa in them. They are loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a good state to be in. It's not the complete jazb as we know it. These are all stages in jazb, if you want to call it. Starting with the tawbah and you know, inaba and being an awab, etc. We have spoken about that in this before, but you know, in Ramadan, it's just a reminder <coughs> that you know, this is one of the things that we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that, oh Allah, that you know, and usually what happens, I'll tell you what happens is that sometimes the heart becomes so hardened. <laughs> it has become so desensitized to, to sins, to you know things we have normalized, that now it just loses the ability to feel. It's very ajeeb. It's a very ajeeb hal. That kind of wahsha, that kind of hardness and harshness. And it's just you can see the rust there. Like even though you might be reading the Quran, it's just the heart is not there. You might be doing sajda in front of Allah, but the heart is just not there. It's so ajeeb. So ajeeb. And so, you know, we should, again, what do we do? We, we try to cry. And if you can't cry, just make the face of crying. And, you know, this is, it's again, it's Allah Ta'ala's mercy to whomever Allah Ta'ala wants, that Allah Ta'ala softens the heart. And, you know, this is one of the signs of the Sahaba Kiram, that they used to cry a lot. They used to cry a lot. Abu Bakr Siddiq, he used to read the Quran and he used to cry and cry and weep and weep. Umar used to weep so much that he had like permanent marks on his cheeks. I mean, how much crying was there that you have permanent marks on your teeth? Others used to cry so much that grass would grow from the ground where they used to cry. Allahu Akbar. What was that? It was a sign of a soft heart. It was a sign of a heart that was qalbi munib, that it was inclined towards Allah. So, inshallah, if you find crying has become hard for us for whatever reason we should cry over not being able to cry 
We should weep over not being able to weep. And, you know, we should, again, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just open up your heart. Allah, you look at my hal, Allah. Allah, I cannot live like this. This sharmindagi, this embarrassment that I am in, Allah. I am ashamed to even look at me, Allah. And you look at me all the time in my heart, in my hal. Ya Allah, I'm such a despicable person that, you know, this is what I've become. You gave me a life and I've spent 40, 50 years and this is, this is what I have become. Ya Allah Kareem. Like, how am I going to present myself in front of you on the Day of Judgment? What will I say when I see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And if I'm rejected or my heart is rejected in this dunya, Ya Allah Kareem, what will become of me? You know, this whole life that has been given to me and this... The chance that you gave me, and you made me a Muslim. I mean, there was, you know, I was a Muslim, and I used to sit with Muslims, and I used to go to masjids and khanqas and this and that, and still the inner hal is like this. Hmm? So, you know, you have to open up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Ramadan. So, this month of Rahmah, Barakah, this Ashara of Rahmah as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at us with that. Huh? With that, with that gaze of, of mercy and changes us. And that we Allah Ta'ala just look at us once with that muhabba, with that ishq. And Allah, we want to feel again, we want to change, Ya Allah Kareem. And Allah Ta'ala will make peace. So inshallah Ta'ala, today we make niya that we will want to become Abd Muneeb of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we discover our inaba. And if it's not there, then we'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give it to us. Ameen ya Rabbul Alameen. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.